Hello ladies and gentlemen, security before here bringing you another Minecraft 401 BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Carnage Class Battleship. The Carnage Clash was a group of four dreadnought battleships built for the German Kaiser Lich Marine, which translates to Imperial Navy in the early 1910s. The class was comprised of Carnage, Elite Ship, Grosse Kerfos, Mark Graf, and Kron Prinz. The design of the ships was derived from the preceding Kaiser class, using the same basic hull but with a rearranged main battery of 10 30.5cm or 12 inch guns with 5 twin turrets to improve the gun's firing arcs, instead of the staggered wing turrets used in the Kaisers. The Kernich placed their main guns all on the center line using the super firing pairs fore and aft and budgetary constraints and the need to begin construction quickly to complete the Brit with Britain, or compete with Britain in the Anglo-German naval arms race prevented any more radical changes. Diesel engines were planned for the ships, but they could not be readied in time, so all four vessels reverted to steam turbines for their propulsion system. As uh, tensions in Europe spiraled out of control during the July crisis in 1914, work on the ships was accelerated. All four ships were completed in early months of World War I, and they were rushed into the service to join uh, the battle squadron of the High Seas Fleet. They took part in a number of operations in the North Sea and in support of the battle cruisers of one scouting group, including the raid on Yarmouth and raid on Scarborough, Hadapool, and Whitby in the late 1940s. During 1915 passed uneventfully as a series of sweeps into the North Sea failed to bring contact with the elements of the British Royal Navy. All four ships were present at the Battle of Jutland on May 31st through June 1st in 1916 where they formed the front of the German line of battle. As a result, they received numerous hits, with Kron's Prince the only member of the class to avoid being damaged in action. Um, the ships later on uh, didn't saw some service here and there throughout the rest of the war, and all sh four ships at the end were interned at Scapa Flow after the war, where they were scuttled on June 21st, 1919. Grosser Kerfus was raised in 1938 and broken up with the other three vessels remained on the sea floor where they remain popular diving sites. So, yeah, pretty sad story there for the uh, Greenwich class uh, battle cruisers here, or sorry, battleships. Um, but really cool, our first ever World War One era German battleship, and the thing is definitely quite a mean looking ship. So kind of diving into the uh, ship itself, obviously we have the main guns up here in the front, the two sets of 12 inch um, turrets here on the front. Um, as we work way back, we have the conning tower here, so a pretty low profile tower compared to, you know, other ships and stuff like that, so kind of cool, um, subdued kind of look. It's got a pretty nice secondary battery of, um, I imagine probably mostly 5 inch guns, if I had to take a guess, probably something different there, but it has a pretty good battery line of this all on the side here. And as we work our way over here, we have basically the mid-deck section where there is a uh, turret number three and you also have some cranes here for supporting the various lifeboats attached to the side of the ship we then have another small battery here of what again seems like five inch or uh, lower caliber guns and then working our way back here we have the, the two after its tur turrets four and five um, so overall pretty cool looking ship I really do like the way it came out I think it's gonna make a awesome addition for World War one theme week but also it's a kind of pinnacle uh, Imperial German uh, battleship, really, ship of the line um, for this time period. So, cool ship. Um, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our first layer, we're going ahead and start off layer 1. A few quick things to mention here for this ship, if you are completely new to my BAFTA build tutorials, I like to structure the first few layers here is we're going to be doing half on our camera, half off. What this means is we're going to build the entire center line of the ship, and then everything on the right side, and then it'll be up to you guys to copy the air side over. We're going to do this for about the first few, first like four layers, or three layers, and then we'll go ahead and start doing the entire ship all together. Um, but it's pretty straightforward and really shouldn't be anything too crazy to go ahead and do. But let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we want to do is we're going to be going ahead and building basically layer one here, which is going to be the very bottom of our ship. Now if you do plan on putting this on the water, which I imagine a lot of you guys are going to do, you want to make sure that you place this an entire block underwater. So you can see here this is the water level here where blue concrete goes across, and you're going to want to make sure that um, this layer here is a block underneath it. So once you have that stored out, we're pretty much good to go. We're going to start off by placing down a acacia wood trapdoor, followed by a brick slab, and then a brick stair. We're going to go then place down a long row of red concrete, and this row in total 
is going to be 29 blocks in length. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down an end rod on the end here, followed by a birch wood slab. Once we have that done, we want to go ahead and then place down a block coming off this slab here, and then the both sides of this block we're going to place on a case wood trap door, open it up like so, and then delete that block just like that. After that's done, go ahead and go back up to the front here. We're going to place down a acacia wood trap door to the side of this second red concrete block. We're going to then place down a brick top slab and a brick up sound stair. We're going to go then take our red concrete, go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23 red concrete blocks back. We're going to then place down a brick up sound stair and a brick top slab like so, and then a birch wood slab coming off the brick slab. On the side of those uh, slabs and stairs, we're going to place down a row of two of acacia wood signs. After that's done, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down an acacia wood trap door coming off the side of this red concrete block here. And we're going to place down a brick top slab, a brick upside down stair, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 red concrete blocks back, a brick upside down stair, a brick top slab, and an acacia wood trap door. After that, we're going to go out to the side here and up to the front. We're going to go to the second red concrete block back, place down an acacia wood trapdoor on the side. We're going to then place down a row of one, two, three brick walls, and then one, two, three, four, five, six red concrete blocks, and then one, two, three red brick walls, and then two acacia wood uh, trapdoors uh, kind of opened like so on the back there. Uh, and then on the side here, we're going to go to the middle four red concrete blocks, and we're going to place down four acacia wood trapdoors and open them up as well, like that against those blocks. And once we have that done, that's basically it for this layer. Uh, once you copy the other side over to basically the other side, it should look something like this from up above. And that right there is going to do it for your first layer. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number two. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, we're going to start off by going ahead and doing our center line. So we're going to start off with the front here. We're going to place down a red concrete block on top of this acacia wood uh, the case with trapdoor here and then coming off that block we're going to place down a brick up sound stair going forward from it. Going back from this red concrete block we're going to place down an additional one, two, three, and four back. So you have a total of five like that going back from the brick stair. We're going to go then go to the back of the ship and do our center line back here. On top of this end rod we're going to place down a red concrete block followed by a second block back, a brick up sound stair, a brick top slab, and then a, a case with trapdoor like that on the end there. After that we're going to go back, go back up to the front here. We're going to go to these last two red concrete blocks, we're going to place down two brick walls. We're going to then place down one, two, three red concrete blocks back, and then a brick wall here to the side. We're going to then place down an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven red concrete blocks back, and on these last four red concrete blocks, we're going to place down four brick walls. We're going to then place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight red concrete blocks, and then one, two, three, four brick walls. On the inside here, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 red concrete blocks, and then 1 and 2 brick walls. On the inside here, the brick walls, we're going to place down 1 and 2 red concrete blocks, followed by an additional block, a brick up sound stair, and then a top slab coming off that stair like so. With uh, that all complete there, that is going to basically wrap it up for this layer. You're going to take the same thing, copy it over the other side, and I do recommend uh, you can fill the inside in here if you do want, just to kind of make the build a little bit more solid. Doesn't really matter though, that's the bare minimum blocks you will need to do your outline. Anyways, that right there is going to do it for layer number two. And with that, let's move into layer number three. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three, to go ahead and get started with here, again, working on our center line, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this brick upside down stair. And then we're going to go back from that stone block one, two, three, and four, save a row of five of stone blocks there on the front. Go ahead and move into the back here. We're going to place down a stone block on top of this acacia wood trapdoor on the very back here. And then we're going to place down one, two, three, and four spruce wood planks going forward. After that, we're going to go back, go back up to the front and we're going to go and start working around to the sides. To start off with, we're going to go to our second and third blocks. We're going to place down iron trapdoors to the side here. And using a debug stick, we're going to be going ahead and uh, basically using this debug stick to close these trapdoors. Now, if you do not have access to a debug stick and you cannot do this with the trapdoors, I just don't recommend putting any trapdoors here. It's kind of a optional um, extra feature you can put in just to kind of help shape um, this ship in some areas here and there. Uh, but again, if you don't add the trapdoors, it's not anything de detrimental from the, detrimental to the build. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down two andesite walls here in the last two blocks, and then one, two, three, four stone blocks back. On these last two blocks here, we're going to place down two andesite walls to the side, and then a stone block. Going back from the stone block, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen spruce wood planks back, followed by one, two, three, four stone blocks, and then one, two, three andesite walls back. Once we get to uh, this point, we're going to go back up here to the front. We're going to go to these first two uh, blocks here of spruce wood. We're going to place down two iron trapdoors on the side. We're going to use a debug stick here to close those. If, again, if you do not have access to the debug stick in doing this, you can go and replace these two blocks here with stone blocks. But we're going to be using the spruce wood since we can use that for our trapdoors. After we have that all done, uh, we want to go ahead and then take our... Uh, inside walls, we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to then take our stone blocks and place it in a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So actually, it should be a row of 8, actually. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, so a row of 8. And then we're going to then place down a row of 1, 2, 3, and 4 of these inside walls. And again, we're going to do the same thing here for iron trap doors right there in that section. After that, go ahead and go on the inside here. We're going to go next to this stone block. We're going to place down a spruce wood plank, followed by one, two, three, four, five back. And then we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, and three stone blocks back, followed by two andesite walls. On the side of this stone block here, we're going to place down an iron trap door. And we're going to then use a debug stick to close it, like that. And that right there is going to basically do it there for um, all that. And with that, that is going to pretty much complete this layer. Um, if you do want to make it a little bit of solid, you can just go and fill the inside in here with spruce wood planks. But again, it's not something that's completely necessary. Um, but with that, that's going to do it there for layer number three for the build. Again, here's what it looks like from up above. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer four. For these layers uh, here on out, we're going to go and basically start building the entire ship all together for the uh, rest of the layers going upwards. So to begin with, uh, for this layer, we're going to go and place down an andesite wall on the front of the ship here. We're going to go and then place down a stone block back from it. And on the side here of that stone block, we're going to go and place down a skeleton skull to both sides. We then want to place down two spruce wood planks here in the center, followed by a andesite, or sorry, a stone upside down stair to both sides. We're going to go and then place down a second stone stair going back. And then the stone upside down corner stair to both sides like so. Over here on the right side, on this center stone stair, we're going to place down an item frame and then a crossbow in the item frame, rotated facing downwards. Over here on the left side of the ship, we're going to go and place down two item frames with crossbows, both in those item frames facing downwards like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down uh, one, two, three, uh, more spruce wood planks back, and then two stone blocks on both sides. On this first, uh, this first stone block here, we're going to place down a uh, black stone button on both ends and also from the previous layer on these two stone blocks there should be two black stone buttons as well so go ahead and make sure that those are added on there to both sides on the bottom blocks there we're going to go ahead and take our andesite walls we're going to place down one two three four five and six going back along the side here and same thing over here one two three four five six and on the inside here we're just going to go ahead and take our uh, spruce wood planks and fill in the space in between here with spruce wood planks like so We'll get to this section here, uh, we're going to basically get into our secondary batteries. For this, we're going to start off by going ahead and placing down a stone brick block, followed by an end rod coming off it to the side, same thing over here. We're going to then place down an andesite wall to both sides, again the same thing, stone brick block, both sides, and an end rod, followed by an andesite wall again, and another stone brick block, with an end rod coming off that stone brick block, to, again to both sides. We then want to go ahead and place down an andesite wall to both sides, followed by a uh, stone stair, so just like this, to both sides, and we're going to go then place down a, or sorry my bad, it's actually going to be a stone brick block on both ends again, and then an end rod, and then now we're going to go and do an inside wall to both sides, and then a stone stair, like that, so my apologies on that. After that we're going to place down another stone brick block on both ends, end rod coming off that block, inside wall, going back, Stone brick block to both sides again, and rod coming off those blocks. Another andesite wall to both sides here, and there's stone brick block going back, and an end rod coming off that stone brick block on both sides. 
And then once we get to this point, we're just going to place down the inside wall to both sides. And we're going to take our stone blocks and place down a row of three of stone blocks going across like so. Now we can go and then take our spruce wood planks and just fill the inside here completely in with our spruce wood planks. And this right here is just going to fill this in and basically create our deck space for the next layer. And just like that, that's all filled in. Now also to the sides here, we're going to grab ourselves some spruce wood planks and some redstone repeaters. We're going to start off by going ahead and placing down a redstone repeater like this up here in the front and one also right here. We're going to place down a spruce pressure plate on this and the side wall. Same thing over here. We then want to place down two spruce pressure plates right here. Same thing on this side. We're going to then place down another redstone repeater facing the same direction on both sides here. And then another spruce wood pressure plate and then a spruce wood pressure plate here on top of this wall to both sides. Now once we get to this point, also in the front here, we're going to go to this uh, third or sorry, fourth from the front and the side wall here. We're going to place down an item frame on the side and then a white bed in the item frame. We then want to go ahead and also place down a spruce wood sign on the side of that wall, just like that. Over here, we're going to do the same thing. So item frame, white bed, rotate on side, and a spruce wood sign over it, just like that. With that finished, going ahead and go into the back here. We're going to then place down a uh, row of three of stone full blocks across the center there. We're going to place down a stone full block in the center here and a side wall to both sides. And we're going to do the same thing again. So stone block and a side wall to both sides. We then want to place down two spruce pressure plates. Or sorry, my bad. It's going to be a redstone repeater to begin with, with the notches spread apart like so on both sides. And then we're going to go back from this with one and two spruce pressure plates on both sides. Once we have that done, we're going to place down another redstone repeater. This time again with the notches spread apart like so. We're going to go then place down a uh, polished uh, blackstone upside down stair right here followed by a polished blackstone full block and then another upside down stair coming off that we're going to go then go to the sides here and place down an upside down stone corner stair come off this stair here and then two andesite walls on the sides of the stairs and full blocks like so and a spruce wood sign on the sides of the wall here that connects up to this corner stair like so after we have that done we're going to take our dark oak fence gates and place down two fence gates coming off this stair like this and opened up toward it as well. On the sides here, we're going to place down a spruce pressure plate here to both sides of this first fence gate. We're going to then follow this up by placing down a redstone repeater to both sides. A pressure plate again to both sides here. Stone button in the center. And on the back here, we're going to then place down a lever facing backwards. A dark oak fence gate, which is going to be facing like this and then open up toward the rear. And then a end rod on top of that fence gate. And we're also going to place down a spruce pressure plate on top of this wall here to both ends. And once we have that all done, uh, that is going to pretty much wrap it up here for this layer. Here's an overview of what this looks like. And as you can see, we basically have all of our secondary batteries and our first turret being constructed. So that right there is going to do it for layer four. And with that, let's move into layer number five. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a dark oak fence gate on top of this wall right here and we're going to open it up toward the rear. We're going to then place down a lever on top of the stone block facing toward this fence gate and then we're just going to place down an end rod on top of the fence gate like so. After that we want to go and then grab ourselves uh, some spruce wood pressure plates. We're going to place down a spruce wood pressure plate here to both sides, an item frame to both sides and then a black bin in the item frame rotate around so the pillars are facing toward the front of the ship. We then want to go and place down a stone button which is going to go in the center here and we're going to then place down a redstone repeater on this center block like so facing this direction. Going back from the item frames we're going to place down two redstone dust pieces back on both sides and then a wither skeleton skull on these two stone blocks. We then want to go ahead and place down a black polished black stone stair in this section here and then going forward from that we're going to go and place down one and two dark oak fence gates and open them up back toward the stair. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some black stone full blocks. We're going to place down two full blocks. Or sorry, my bad. One full block and then a upside down stair. Coming off uh, the sides here of this stair right here, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone corner stair. Upside down, coming off both sides there. And then taking our andesite walls, we're going to go ahead and place down one and two going forward. 
and one and two on the sides. And then on the middle wall right here, we're going to place down a spruce wood sign on the side, like so. We then want to grab our end rods on top of this and site wall right here. We're going to place down an end rod to both sides. And we're also going to place down an end rod, which is going to go on top of this wall right here. Again, on both sides. Also on this wall right here, we're going to place down a spruce pressure plate to both sides. When we get to this section, we're going to place down a stone block, which is going to go in the center. Like so. And then an andesite wall to both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down another stone block to both sides here, and then a spruce wood plank there in the center. We're going to go ahead and go back with a stone block on both sides here, and then another spruce wood plank there in the center. We're going to place down a spruce pressure plate here on both sides on top of those walls, and we want to go ahead and then grab our andesite walls and place down one, two, three back, and one, two, three. Uh, we're going to go ahead and then take our stone blocks, and we're going to place down one, two, one, two, and then two spruce wood planks there in the center, like so. When we get to this section here, we're going to place down a row of three of stone blocks across. We then want to go ahead and place down a stone block here in the center, and then an andesite wall to both sides, and then we're going to place down one more stone block that goes back like so. Now, going to the sides here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some quartz slabs and stairs. We're going to place down a quartz slab, which is going to be on top of the stone brick block, followed by a quartz upside down stair to both sides here. On the side of that, we're going to place down a birchwood sign, like so, and we're going to do the same thing over here. So a quartz slab, upside down stair here on both sides, and a birchwood sign on the side of that slab. After that, uh, we want to go and then grab our quartz stairs, and we're also going to need some dark oak wood slabs. We're going to place down a quartz stair here, stair right behind it, and a dark oak wood slab after that, and we're going to place down a birchwood sign on the side of the second stair and the slab. Same thing over here, just like this. And with that all done, uh, we want to go and then go to the center space here. We're going to place down a upside down polished black stone stair right there, followed by a narrow polished black stone full block and a narrow stair coming off of it. We then want to grab our dark oak fence gates. We're going to place down two fence gates here, open up toward the stair. And then going to the sides here, we're going to place down two inside walls to both sides here. And then a stone upside down stair here on both sides of that block. And once we have that all finished there, uh, we're going to go ahead and then skip forward to this section here in front of the fence gates. This section, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of stone blocks. So one, two, three, going across. We're going to go ahead and place down a quartz stair on top of this wall right here. And then a dark oak wood slab behind it. And taking our birchwood sign, we're going to place down a birchwood sign on the side of the quartz stair. Same thing over here on this side as well. Once we have that done, we want to go and then place down a dark oak, or sorry, a spruce wood pressure plate on top of this stone brick block. And then after that, we want to go ahead and then focus on this section. We're going to place down a stone block here in the center, followed by an andesite wall to both sides. And we're going to go and then place down another stone block in the center, followed by again an andesite wall to both sides. Now we get to this section here, we're going to place down a spruce wood pressure plate on top of this wall to both sides here, a quartz stair, and then a dark oak wood slab behind the quartz stair. On the side of the quartz stair, we're going to place down a uh, birchwood sign, same thing over here. And then we're going to go ahead and then take our looms, and we're going to place down a loom here on both sides, followed by a stone block there in the center. Now at this point here, we're going to start working on our uh, rear turret here. We're going to place down a, a polished black stone upside down stair like so. A full block coming off of it in an air stair. We're going to place down two dark oak wood fence gates coming off the stair like that toward it. And we're going to then go to the sides here. Place down a stone upside down stair on both sides of that uh, black stone stair and then two inside walls going forward. On the sides here we're going to place down a spruce wood sign to both sides of this wall. And we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame and also a white bed. We're going to place down an item frame here on the side of the wall and a white bed in the item frame like that, rotate on its side. And same thing on this side. After uh, that's all done there, that's going to pretty much uh, do it for this layer. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and move into our next layer. Uh, here's a quick overview actually, real quick, before we go and move on. And with that, we'll go and move into our next layer, layer number six.
All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer. We're going ahead and moving into layer number six. For layer six, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a skeleton skull, which is going to go directly on top of this uh, end rod to both sides here. And then coming off that going forward, we're going to place down another end rod like that for these two smaller cranes here located on the two sides of the ship here in the front. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished blackstone stair here by two fence gates coming off the stair going forward and we want to go and then go back from the block with a polished blackstone full block and an upside down stair we're going to go and then place down two anisite walls here to both sides and then grabbing our stone we're going to place down a stone upside down corner stair on both sides of the stair we then also want to place down an item frame here on the side of the wall a white bed in the item frame a spruce wood sign on the side of the wall and same thing over here an item frame white bed and a spruce wood sign on the side like that once we have that complete, we're going to go ahead and then place down an inside wall here in the center. And then uh, going off that wall, we're actually going to place down a total of three across, and then a skeleton skull on both ends. We then want to take our stone blocks, and we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of stone blocks across, followed by a second row of three. After that, we're going to place down a dark liquid button, or sorry, our black, polished black stone button on both sides of this first stone block. Uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a stone block here in the center and a site wall that goes up on both sides here and our stone block up right here. We're going to take our dark oak wood and we're going to place down a dark oak wood pressure plate on top of these quartz stairs. In the center space right here, uh, we're going to go ahead very simply just place down a redstone repeater on top of this polished black stone block like that for the turret. And then moving to this section, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone block in the middle on top of this block here. We're going to go ahead and place down an anvil to both sides. And then coming off that anvil going forward and place down one and two end rods going forward like so. We're then going to go ahead and skip a space. And then on top of this wall right here we're going to place down a chain on both sides which will be part of the uh, cable there for the uh, actual crane itself once we uh, finish off or finish the cranes off in the next layer. After that we're going to go ahead and place down another stone block back here. We're going to then place down a stone brick stair to both sides with an end rod coming off like that for our uh, secondary gun battery in this section. We're going to then place down a andesite wall here in the center and we're going to then take a daylight detector, place it down on both sides of these stairs and turn it to the night mode. After we have that done, we're going to then place down another stone brick stair on top of these looms and then another end rod coming off those stone brick stairs to both sides. In the space in between them, we're going to go ahead and also place down a daylight detector and turn that to night mode. On top of uh, turret number four here, we're going to place down a white carpet on top of that upside down stair and then a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart like so. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number six for the build. And with that, we're going to move into our next layer, layer number seven. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 7. For layer 7, go ahead and get started with here. We're going to go and take our stone blocks and we're going to place down a row of 3 across these 3 inside walls. Once we have that done, we're going to go and take our item frames and we're going to wrap them around the sides here of this row of 3. And then we're going to go and place down black beds in those item frames, like so, all the way around there for basically the bridge. We then want to place down a white carpet on top of this block here, and then a redstone up here with the notches spread apart on top of this polished black stone block like that like that after that's all done we're going to then place down a stone block that goes back from this one here a item frame on both sides here and also black beds in those item frames like that we then want to take our spruce pressure plates we're going to place down one two three and one two three along the sides here and on the sides of those pressure plates we're going to place down a row of three of dark liquid signs so one two and three same thing over here one, let's see, two, and then we have three. After that, uh, we're going to then place down a uh, black stone wall here in the center, and then we're going to place down two stone blocks that go back from it. We're going to then place down a skeleton skull on the side of the stone block to both sides like that. After that's done, moving to our crane here, we're going to place down a andesite wall on top of this anvil here. Then coming off that inside wall, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves barrier blocks. We're going to place down two barrier blocks going forward 
like so. And then on those barrier blocks on the top of this first one here, we're going to place down a stone button and then one out to the side. Same thing for this one, stone button, and then one to the side there of the second barrier block. After that, coming off those barrier blocks, we're going to place down an end rod to both sides. And then coming off that end rod, we're going to place down a skeleton skull like that, which should end above the chains there, like so. With that done, going ahead and moving to this section here, we're going to place down two stone blocks in the space here. A skeleton skull to both sides of these stone blocks. And, or sorry, this is going to be a stone block, and this right here, um, this block right here is going to be a stone stair. So like so. And we're going to then place down an andesite wall on top of this one right here. And once we have that done, that is going to do it there for layer 7. And uh, here's again an overview of what this looks like. And with that, we're going to move into our final layers, where we're just going to put the mass, smokestacks, and pretty much call it good. So with that, let's go ahead and move into our final layers. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our final layers, we have layers 8 through 16. For these layers, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to be going ahead and taking grey carpet. We're going to place down a row of three of grey carpet across the top here, those stone full blocks. We then want to place down a skeleton skull here, followed by an end rod, come up both sides of the skeleton skull. And we're going to then place down a stone stair here on top of this block. We're going to go ahead and go back from the stone stair with another stone block, followed by a iron trap door, which is going to be coming off of the side here, or actually it's going to be a stone slab, so we'll grab a stone slab here, it's going to be a stone slab coming off this block here to both sides, and then a iron trap door after that. Around this iron trap door, we're going to be going ahead and taking our dark liquid signs and wrap them around like so. Same thing on this side, just like that. And then after we have that done, we're going to place down a skeleton skull on both sides of this stair. We're also going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull, which actually first we're going to place down a stone block here, and then a skeleton skull on both sides of that stone block. Going ahead and moving up to our next layer here for the front mass, we're going to be going ahead and then placing down a polished black stone wall on top of the stair here. To the sides of it, we want to go ahead and place down a iron trap door to both sides, an item frame, and then in those item frames we're going to be going ahead and placing down snowballs with dark liquid signs on the side of these iron trap doors. We then want to place down a stone stair here on top of this block and then a stone full block behind the stair. On both sides of the stone block we're going to place down a skeleton skull followed by an iron trap door again to both sides here an item frame come off the sides of these iron trap doors out to the side and then in that item frame we're going to place down a snowball followed by a dark liquid sign here on the sides of these iron trap doors. With that done, we're going to then lastly, on the top here, for the smokestack at least, place down a black concrete block, an item frame, and in that item frame we want to go and place down an iron bar. Uh, once we have that done, we're going to also take an end rod, and we're going to be placing down an end rod, which is going to come off both sides of this black concrete block. Going back up to this uh, front mast, we're going to place down a polished black stone wall on top of this one. We're going to go then place down a narrow brick fence post up, followed by a polished black stone wall again. We're going to go ahead and go off this wall with end rods that kind of go back at an angle like this. And same thing here for the front section. So if I can get this to work right, like so. And then same thing like this out to the side here on both, on all four sides like that. So they kind of come off and forming an X there with our end rods. We're going to go then place down a black concrete block on the top here. A wither skeleton skull coming off the block toward the front. And then two end rods up like that with a wither skeleton skull on the very tip. And that right there is going to make our front mast. Moving to our rear, we're going to go to this stone block here. We're going to go up one, two, more stone blocks, and then we're going to place down a black concrete block. Like we did for the front, we're going to place down an item frame on top of the block and then a iron bar in it like so. We then want to go ahead and place down a end rod on both sides of this block like so. Go ahead and move back to this section. We're going to then place down a stone stair on top of this one right here. We're going to go off to the side here from the stone stairs with a iron trap door to both sides. And coming off the iron trap door itself, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a item frame. And then in that item frame we're going to place down a snowball. Same thing over here. And on top of these walls here, we're going to place down skeleton skulls. 
Uh, we then want to go ahead and also take our dark liquid signs, and we're going to place down a dark liquid sign on the side of this iron trap door to both sides. We then want to go ahead and place down a stone stair on top of this stair, and then on both sides of the stone stair, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. We're going to go then take our polished blackstone, we're going to go ahead and go up one and two polished blackstone blocks, fall by one, two, and three, narrow brick fence post up, and then a narrow polished blackstone wall, and then one, two, and three, and rods up. Go to this section here, we're going to go to this narrow brick fence post here, we're going to place down end rods, two end rods coming out to the sides like this of the ship, and then an end rod coming off the sides facing toward the rear, and toward the front. So you have one on these sides, and then two on the outer sides. With that all done, we want to go and then go up to the top here of this mass also, and where this end rod is on the very tip here, we're going to place down a end rod to both sides as well. Uh, lastly, we're going to go and grab ourselves some barrier blocks and stone buttons. We're going to take our barrier blocks, we're going to do a row down the center here of barrier blocks, and then we're going to then take our stone buttons and place them here along the sides. Same thing over here as well. Just like that, and that's going to basically connect our two masts together for the rigging. And the very last thing we need to do here is to take a lever and place it on top of this barrier block here, facing toward the front like so. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up my design here for the uh, Grenig, uh class battleship. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do want to use this build, I do ask that you guys give me a proper credit for it. This can be the thing from a solid build to my channel or this video if this does appear in social media sites. As always, guys, give me proper credit for it the build. That's all I ask for when doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and continue to keep me inspired to keep on posting these videos. So um, as, long as, as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use the proper projects you guys are working on. And that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, don't forget to like comment, and subscribe. This has been Gear204, and I'll see you guys next time.